Okay. So hi and welcome to my talk. It's about a small uh, side project that I worked on, but I had a lot of fun doing it. And I think it's a very simple application of new radio and, and SDR in general. And it's uh, something very accessible. I did it with hardware for 35 euros. So maybe it gives you an idea of uh, what you can look at and what's out there where you can kind of start playing with software-defined radio. So a bit about me, I'm, I'm Bastian. and. I work a lot with software-defined radio, a bit at university, where I mainly uh, work on Wi-Fi stuff, but also uh, on sensor networking stuff, when we have a project where we actually put sensor modes on beds, so that was fun. And yeah, in my free time, I play around with uh, different technologies, a bit with RDS, and try to receive what's out there. Okay, so these days, a lot of people are actually talking about smart cities, smart uh, power grids, smart lights, smart everything. And smart often means networked, and embedded systems. The network often means wireless. And uh, yeah, but actually today I thought, let's do the absolute opposite. Um, let's do, uh, look at the absolute dumbest thing you could ever do. And in fact, when we um, in university have the course on embedded system, the kind of hello world application is always let's turn an LED on and off. And basically that's what I want to look at today. <laughs> so um, let's uh, yeah, turn some LEDs on and off. So in Germany we, we have some wireless traffic lights. Um, some, there was a post on Hackaday about what, what I am just showing. And then I read the comments and it was a discussion like, what the hell is he talking about? And then um, somebody explained that they seemingly have these wireless traffic lights in Europe. So I don't know if they just are not there in the US or whatever. but. Yeah, so it's about uh, mobile traffic lights. And I just wanted to give a very brief shout out uh, to my friends from Internetwache because they just by chance um, found the same traffic lights in the GSM network. So they are usually scanning around in the um, internet and found that these wireless traffic lights actually have a, a GSM uplink. So for monitoring and configuration and stuff like that, they are actually online, so they were able to log in and uh, do some stuff. So this was covered in the news uh, <laughs> uh, last year. And just very recently, um, Mike Osman um, to, and um, Dominic Spill, they triggered some traffic lights with infrared. So today, we want to look at this big antenna. And as you might guess, that doesn't look like GSM. So for the GSM uplink, they maybe didn't put this on the on the traffic light. So yeah, I was I was looking into this. And one friend of mine said, whenever he's um, close to these traffic lights, his DAB, his digital audio radio, just stops working. So um, <laughs> I thought, OK, um, yeah, let, let's look around in, in that area. And actually, that's a, that's a band which is kind of to uh, regional allocated. So um, it's kind of land mobile radio. I'm not sure how the, uh, the translation is in German, it's Betriebsfunk. And usually you have some FM modulations there. So I used the um, RTL, SDR, RTL SDR dongle that we've already seen today a lot, and I think all guys know it, and just started GQRX. And indeed, there was a very strong signal when I was close to the traffic light. OK, and usually on these bands, they are FM modulated and just tried it. And there were some, yeah, these signals look good, which came out of there. And my, my normal workflow when, when doing these things is there's now really some really great tooling. So we have GQRX, where you have seen where I could easily see the signal and filter the signal. And then I, I just did some um, recording to a WAV file and had and loaded the WAV file in, in Spectrum. I will in, um, in a minute show you the tool. And Spectrum is really nice if you just want to see, get the signal parameters, see how it is modulated, the um, bits per second and stuff like that. And then um, after I know the signal parameters, I just do some um, simple decoding in the radio. So let's first look at in Spectrum. So th this is how the um, WAV file loaded in Spectrum looks like. Um, if there's no transmission with FM, then we have just some noise here. And then um, the, here you can see the traffic lights. So there are always slots of one second. And in between, we have six transmissions. So um, the, the fact that they look a bit different um, um, basically tells you that there seems to be a different SNR. So these are actually one traffic light and one is the other traffic light. So they are not sending this, just not one sending and the other is only receiving, but they are sending back and forth. So to assert that the other traffic light is still there. And they are sending different types of frames. So basically we have some 
ones that are slightly longer, which we will later see is the kind of master, which um, tells the other one what to show. And the other one is basically just reporting back. Or at some points, it's also telling the master that there is, um, for example, a car. Some, some mobile traffic lights that actually have cameras to detect if there's a car ahead, so they can um, maybe preempt the signal and give you priority and just not follow always a strict schedule. OK, so, th so this is. Um, a very, very rough, so zoomed out version of the signal. So let's have a bit a closer look. So this is also in spectrum still. It allows you to, to look at the signal and also have an overlay that helps you in finding the bit boundaries. And with this, it was um, pretty obvious if you zoomed in that there's some um, uh, FSK modulation inside there and the um, bit rate was 100 bit per second. So you always have, so this is always um, one bit, and it's ordering between 1,200 and 1,800 hertz. So you either have a complete cycle or one and a half cycle in there. So this was basically the, the most important thing about the signal. And with this, I kind of manually decoded the preamble. Maybe I think Inspectrum also has some, some, uh, some possibility to decode the signal, but I just manually wrote down the preamble because this is then what I needed in GNU Radio. And so. With all knowing this, I can basically come up with a simple GNU radio flow graph to decode this thing. Actually, now I'm still claiming that, oh, and then it's so simple and I'm just doing that step, but I think that this is the step that might be the most challenging for, for, for several people. But, but um, the, the message is that maybe this is the most stupid way to decode the signal, but it's just what I kind of came up with. And basically, here in the in the last step, it just looks for the preamble, and then I have one custom block, which is also just one line of code. It's just whenever it finds the preamble, it's just outputting, I guess, 200 bits or something like that. So I end up with a lot of bits on my console, and I just piped it into a file and wanted to have a look at um, how to decode, uh, how to, to make some sense out of the bits. And <laughs> I, I played a bit around in Vim, and because I like the workflow so much, I thought I'd, give, I'd make a very, very brief video. So actually, this is two and a half minutes of reverse engineering, and it's now twice the speed. So you had two frame formats. OK, now it's just selected one. If you scroll up and down, you see very, very easily the boundaries where there is some information in there. And basically what's in the frame is, so now we get rid of that. If we now scroll up and down, we already see some, some patterns in there and then I just split it. And from this, it has some kind of timer or see, it's, it seems to be a timer that's counting upwards whenever a new complete cycle begins. And then here, I just found something which changes from time to time. And th this turned out to be actually the, the faces of the traffic light. And in the beginning I had, uh, some repeating pattern, so I thought, okay, this, is, this seems to be the same thing. If both show the same, hopefully it's two times red. And then started from there to um, yeah, make, make some sense out of it. So with this, then I had a, at least an idea of how the signal could look. And I created some um, easy interface um, <laughs> so for the web browser. Because, uh, I mean, GNU Radio, we already had it in the file. I have some very shitty web uh, GUI, which was reading the file and then uh, just showing the actual state of the traffic light then in a web browser. And then, of course, I uh, had to go outside and hope you didn't drink too much beer because it's really shaky here. Uh, <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was really cold. And um, so I had two different types of traffic light. This one was directly in front of our university. And so this was really convenient to work, except that it was in the night and pretty cold. And then with another one where I also have a video on my website. So if you want to give it a try, but it, here it was, was just with the light, it was it's just much easier to see that it's kind of, yeah, following the traffic light. Okay, so that was um, the, I actually can receive it, and whenever, actually I was pretty happy with that, <laughs> and already kind of good enough, uh, but whenever I, I, I showed it to someone, the, the obvious question was, <laughs> 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 and, and I, I thought, okay, at least I should c kind of include it in the talk a bit, and, and say a word about it. Um, <laughs> okay, I thought about, okay, how can I transmit? I have one of those, but I'm very sure that it doesn't allow me to transmit out of the uh, amateur radio bands. So maybe it can receive there, but trans, uh, transmitting is uh, limited. I looked on eBay. You can, of course, buy lots of um, the, um, these 
uh, land mobile radios or however they are actually called but they are a bit expensive or a bit over 100 euros usually and then I remember that at some point I bought this incredibly cheap shitty device from China <laughs> and, and never, I never actually used it and it turns out with this 25 euro it's kind of very nice because it's cheap and it's portable and even in the uh, link on Amazon it was 172 <laughs> uh, megahertz uh, <laughs> uh, yeah if you play around with it that yeah um, yeah, turns out that that can actually work, or at least I wanted to give it a try. Good. What what can you do? There is the the obvious way, like going beside the traffic light and just screaming in the uh, in the in the radio, and then you, so you're basically jamming, disrupting the communication. But it's pretty boring because it's always possible. But when I had that um, on my blog, there was immediately somebody who uh, who wrote me that he tried that obviously, or for some, whatever reason he knew <laughs> um, that when you just jam it, it's just flashing orange, which makes a lot of sense because this is the kind of fallback solution. Um, what else can you do? So the the actual question is like, could you spoof transmission means like you could generate the signals yourself so that the traffic light would accept it so that you can actually trigger the traffic light. This is what um, yeah, most people seem to be interested in. But um, as I said, it's, most of them have cameras <laughs> and you should not mess around. And also with the GSM uplink, they will, um, they know probably if you're doing some um, shitty stuff with it. So I thought, but, but still, I, I wanted to see if, if there is at least some, I can come up with a proof of concept that maybe you could uh, further investigate it. So OK, I did another uh, GUI, but this time, obviously, I wanted to trigger it. Then I, again, had a GNU radio flow graph where I wanted to, um, when I kind of was generating the signal that I just showed you. And this time, it was just really plain GNU radio blocks. So there's nothing where I, what I had to code. It was basically, I have two signal sources which produce the 100, uh, 1200 hertz signal and the 1800 hertz signal. And then I have some, some logic with the bits which is kind of turning one on and off. So that's in, in a high level overview of the thing. So what, what this then does is, this time it's not connected to uh, SDR or software defined radio stuff, but this time it's just um, outputting the signal into an audio sync. And then it was kind of a road, no risk, no fun. Um, I, I could just connected it directly, the line out of my PC um, to the to the to the radio. Actually, when you look online, they don't recommend doing that. So <laughs> uh, I, I used a USB audio card because I was hoping maybe then just the USB version is broken and not directly my PC, but. At least for, for me, it worked. Actually, you should decouple them, I guess, but I'm not really good in circuits and stuff like that. <laughs> OK, so the thing is, if you enable Vox, so um, I guess all the amateur radio like, know it, is um, you can switch between push to talk and um, that the radio just turns on whenever there is some, some signal. So I enabled Vox on the radio, connected it to the line in of the microphone, and um, yeah, there you basically then have your um, your transceiver and I just have a very brief demo of the setup sh in, in on my desk at university so you see I have another GUI here then there is GNU radio stuff going on and it's then connected to um, the, the handheld radio here and on, on the other side there is the other GNU radio um, receiver that I just showed you that was working with the normal traffic light so it's the same frequency the very same thing everything's the same so I was really generating a signal just as the uh, as the traffic light. So yeah, so much for the um, uh, you can also maybe uh, transmit at least in general. So yeah, so that's it for my side. I hope um, yeah you find it a bit uh, <laughs> a funny application, and also I'm now motivated to play a bit around with this uh, cheap technologies that are out there. Okay, so, thanks. Is it is it half? Is it half? Sorry. <laughs> What's yeah, it's half. Yeah, you, oh, you, you oh, oh. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Actually, I thought it's way too much content, so now I was rushing around uh, through the slides. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. So if you have any questions, do you know if anyone would try it? <laughs> no. <laughs>
time a question from the internet. Did you try it? Uh, <laughs> ask me. Ask if he knows that anyone tried it. Eingriff in den Straßenverkehr. Yeah. So, actually, so usually, so I'll, I'll, exactly. So that's usually what happens. That if somebody does it, then hey, done that five years ago or something like that. But actually, seriously, no. So nobody wrote me. So I, I wouldn't know if, if anybody. But I, I also tried different. Um, yeah, I got emails from from other guys who were looking into that, but none of them were actually transmitting something. Yeah. So, so, uh, yeah, yeah, this is the uh, anechoic <laughs> chamber of our <laughs> university. <laughs> what? <laughs> no, this. Uh, and all this has metalized windows where nothing gets out. <laughs> it's a Faraday cage. Exactly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 Yes. So there, it's there seems to be the configuration always seems to be that the one is kind of the 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 main uh, the kind of the master of the communication yeah and the other such as kind of reporting back periodically so that the master actually knows that what he was transmitting actually was received so not that the master turns green and the other doesn't. Yeah, and also on this frequency, you don't have to space them that close because you're actually on 170 megahertz, you get some range. Yeah. Yeah? So you mentioned that new radio is usually the tricky part to get the reverse engineering going. So I was just curious to, to know if you played with wave conversions. This is like this new tool that uh, was published at Schmugon, so it seems that seems so I don't know that particular tool, but um, time, ah, so um, if I already try, oh, yeah, if I tried uh, another tool that was recently released at Schmucon, which is called Airwave, I guess, or how did you say? Uh, the one that I mentioned is Wave Converter. Wave Converter, sorry. Um, yeah, I, I don't know that particular tool, but uh, today in the morning we had a panel where we said about like it's sometimes really hard to get started with GNU Radio. And then when I had a look, another look at my slides, then I knew that um, okay, now now I say from I have all signal parameters, I, I know the preamble, and now I just have to build the GNU Radio receiver. And then this is when I realized that most likely this will be the tricky part for most of the people, so that they really c come from this now because in loading it in a spectrum. It's pretty straightforward, I would say, and then also having some high-level overview. But then from that to the to the transmitter, that might be the part where people draw off, yeah. And but maybe this is something where you maybe we could come up with some default standard solution where you maybe can pl just plug in uh, uh, different different values like one for on-off keying, one generic one, one for FM, and stuff like that for. Uh, there are some out there, but they are kind of distributed. So basically what wave convert, converter does is basically you just feed the IQ data and it figures out everything for you. Ah, so it, you don't even need the parameters. Yeah. No, no, okay. Like, okay, this is the zeros and one for you. Just okay, so, so these wave converters, yeah, should, I should have a look at it and see. Yeah. Yes? No, because I, I think it's because, so it, it is really a, a, a kind of really straightforward. And I, I think it also doesn't make a lot of sense. I had a look at two different, uh, two traffic lights. They all are slightly different. Also, they might have different configurations. So most likely that wouldn't work out of the box either way. So you have to do some slight adaptions. But the, the main point is actually that this is something very straightforward. You can just um, have a look at it and yeah. also, it, is, it, it shouldn't. It shouldn't be just a. Um, I just download, compile, and run a thing. I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can just rent a set of these traffic lights. That you want to yeah. They these the ones at the university they actually rent, <laughs> and it looks like then they then the company is doing the monitoring of the traffic lights and um, also most likely the configuration stuff. Everything remotely, and you just put them there. 
Ja. Yeah, so when I look back, actually, then mainly I was I always had to do something with traffic. Even I, I actually didn't didn't, uh, didn't think about it. So what uh, my other projects were, uh, I received telemetry from buses. So I had a, a, a open street map where you could see the buses in Paderborn driving around. And I had an, uh, a presentation two years ago with um, RDS TMC. So this is the digital subcarrier on FM broadcast data. So there, there's also some traffic information modulated on there. So your usual GPS device gets it from the FM broadcast stations. And also I have a project which is available with is decoding um, my car key fob, for example. Then you get the 60. Um, Four bit rolling rolling code out of it, and yeah stuff like that so there there's tons of this very very low hanging fruits out there where you where it's can some uh, have some fun playing around with yeah. Yeah, so usually when you are um, when you are close to it, then it, it should be very, very dominant and clear that it, it's there. I mean, if you have absolutely no idea about the band, so with this, I really had an idea, and it, I also, if I wouldn't have known that it, it, it kind of interferes with the DAB uh, audio stuff, then I, I would have started there. So if you know or have a rough idea about the frequency allocation, there are some spots to look, but. Yeah, in general, if you just use GQRX and scroll through the band, I, gu I guess you should see it very dominant. For example, with the buses also, I had no clue where they are, but when, when one drove by me very close, it was just bam, so you couldn't miss it. <laughs> in this case, the antenna length uh, would also be hit. Yeah, but for, for this small distances, it, no bias, it's, don't even have to pull it out. <laughs> Yeah. Ah, yeah, yeah, so, so this, this is a half, uh, lambda half dipole, yeah. yeah. So what was it, two meter band, one meter antenna, I don't know, yeah. <coughs> okay, thanks. <laughs>